Hello, unique awesome people. Today, I'm really hoping you're unique awesome people because I want to talk about something that's a little bit more related to my industry. One of my industries is the stripping industry um, than specific to polyamory. But I was just thinking about this and I think it's really relevant and I want to talk about it because it's another one of my confessions that I think makes my experience very unique and interesting and it, I believe, will impact people in unexpected ways. So I thought I would divulge this private conversation I was just having. Um, I have been dancing since I was 16 years old. I'm turning 38 uh, in a few months. So that is a number of years. There was a couple years off um, during my well-behaved monogamous relationships uh, <laughs> that I much regret. <laughs> but for the most part, I've been doing this all my life. And something that people don't think about, or they might joke about it occasionally, but they don't really stop and put it into perspective, is that uh, pushing 60 or 70 year old customers have been the regular people in my life since I was 16 years old. Now, that doesn't mean that I didn't have people my own age and that I didn't have you know meaningful relationships with people my own age and a lot of different life that I lived outside of the strip club in that particular realm, because I did, but I have always had people in their early to mid 60s in my life full time all the time. And these are the people that I am fairly intimate with emotionally, physically on a regular basis. And so that's really impacting me. Like you can't say that there's a lot of people out there who've had that experience. And now I know to the inexperienced mind, the first thing you're thinking is like, oh, this poor girl, all these old perverted people and you know, just the regular old stereotypes that you know rule our world. I'm sure there's some that connect on, on your world and, and your life that bother you. You know, stereotypes are everywhere and they really hurt um, all of us from understanding one another. So really for me, I w I've never been doing anything that I'm not comfortable with. I don't spend time with people that I think are gross. I don't let people do things to me that I don't enjoy that I'm not comfortable with. I genuinely really enjoy engaging with people on a professional level. And so I don't judge people. I don't decide like, you know, is this girl uh, my type? Is this guy my type? Is he my age? Is he the weight that I like? Like, I don't judge people. People come to me to feel better. So that's what I do. I make them feel better. So, you know, I embrace people and I cuddle them and huddle them and I slither them and I erotica them and it makes people happy and I like that it's a huge huge part of my happy healthy lifestyle and so along with that same territory I've formed really meaningful friendships over the years I've had some really solid long-term friendships with people who are much older and of course they have all passed away since I was younger and I've also watched them lose all their friends because when you get into your senior years unfortunately one of the things you have to deal with is that you start losing everybody around you and so I've sort of been consumed by a bit of death all these years I think more than a lot of people just constantly listening to people going through this time in their life where they start to lose everyone around them and every five years or so there's a new bracket of those people at the club coming to me for that intimacy so that has not been sad for me i look at death in a very different light than most people if you're interested in my um right now it's the mushroom burial project on ted.com i think it's really interesting it talks about how we can rethink death and our funeral practices and, and what we're doing and how we're feeling about death and i'm really Really, really into that so go take a peek if you're interested um, and so my point in discussing this right now is that it's really put into perspective for me what it's gonna be like to be an older woman you know I have had many of my um, unhappy monogamous exes make remarks at me you know the various traumas I've already brought up about things and one of them was that you know if you keep acting like this Chelsea you're always gonna be alone and you know that's what narcissistic people do they try to make you feel like you're not good enough so that you'll stay with them but it's funny because I heard that over the years so many times, it really made me think about it and worry about it, right? And so I'm like, well, I'm not gonna stay in a relationship with somebody just because I'm desperate and I'm scared to be alone when I'm older, and it's try narkies. But I, that really put things into perspective and I would think about them more because of that. And so with all that experience that I've just spoke about uh, from the club and the seniors who I have really, really meaningful friendships and connections with, and then the experience from people my own age really mistreating me and putting this you know, condescending gaslighted nonsense in my head I've obviously had some time to think about what my older years are gonna look like and how I want to plan for that right and so that's where polyamory comes in for me as well um, I like to you know correlate polyamory to a lot of different facets in my life that I think a lot of people wouldn't take the time to think about so that's why I wanted to make this video here 
and I hope it makes a little bit of sense for at least one person that would make me happy you know I really really would like and hope and plan to you know live off the grid in a group family with men and women and a couple different partners you know and and build this life that people believe you can't have you know and be healthy and grow my own food and have clean water and depend on one another and have strong unity and and just you know live in a commune kind of manner I really think that that is a beautiful way to live especially when the partners are all bisexual and polyamorous in comparison to my opinions on polygamy <laughs> I'm all for equality <laughs> so you know it gets you thinking and it's like okay so what's that gonna look like look let's say that's something that I do achieve one day and in my late 70s I'm living with you know a few male and female partners and my dreams have come true you know I'm also still gonna have to deal with deaths all around me like I've said I've come to terms with the fact that you know death is just a natural part of life and it's not something to I think take in such a, a, a deep um, horrible way the way a lot of people do when they feel that loss um, and so you know does it make sense to think that I'm gonna have a funner you know end of my journey surrounded by numerous partners I'm gonna have to take and see to their death perhaps you know women tend to outlive men and I'm pretty healthy <laughs> so you know should I make sure I have a few more women than men probably <laughs> these are things that I think about you know the one thing that I don't want to have happen is to have one life partner who I spend all my days and time with who I grow old with and you know potentially die with hopefully but one of us dies before the other and the other one is really left all alone and at that age you know you're not really gonna get out there in the world and reconnect with new people and that's something that I've learned from having these customers in my life you know and watching that all around me my grandmother is 89 years old right now I don't know how much longer she's gonna be around and she's been all alone since my grandfather passed when I was eight years old and I find that incredibly heartbreaking you know so these things motivate my perspectives and my feelings and my ambitions and my needs in life and I thought it was worth making a video about so you guys might think I'm crazy but that's okay because a lot of people do thanks for popping in have a good day